you're in for it now. You've been ordered down to the principal's office, and he doesn't look like he's in a forgiving mood. He lists off all the trouble you're in, gives you a blistering lecture, and pounds his fist on the table before pronouncing your punishment. You've really done it this time, though luckily it'll just be another bout in detention. But some kids have been suspended from school for reasons that can be downright bizarre. If you've seen movies about kids in the 80s, you've probably seen a food fight. These are often portrayed as destructive free-for-alls where the whole cafeteria winds up coated in food. But the reality is often less impressive, and the punishment severe. In Chicago, a group of middle schoolers engaged in some light tossing of food at lunch. After one piece of food went flying, another kid tossed an orange. Someone yelled, FOOD FIGHT, likely hoping to start some chaos, but no one bit. Probably hoping to deter any future Food Fight fans, the school not only suspended 25 students, but they were arrested for reckless conduct and spent several hours in jail. It wasn't the only time food got kids in trouble. Kids love to play with their food, so it wasn't any surprise when a 7-year-old boy chewed his Pop-Tart into some unique shapes. But when he bit it into the shape of a pistol, the school sprung into action. The boy was sent to the principal, who immediately suspended him under the zero-tolerance policy for bringing any kind of weapon to school. The fact that the weapon was made out of a pastry didn't seem to matter. While the school said the boy had a history of behavioral problems and stood by their decision, the incident caused a national uproar. Zero-tolerance policies sometimes get a little out of control. What was the best day in elementary school? When someone had a birthday and they brought in treats, of course. But for one Delaware first grader, it turned all too serious. He brought in a birthday cake for the whole class to share and helpfully brought in a knife for the teacher to cut the cake. She did, and then immediately sent the child down to the principal, where he was immediately suspended for bringing a weapon to school. Happy birthday, kid! While the school was initially going to send him to an alternative school for 45 days, it was eventually lowered to a three-day suspension after national attention. Safety is first at schools, and that can even cause trouble for good Samaritans. When a student at a middle school in Virginia saw a parent they knew struggling with a heavy package, they held the door open to the school to let them in. Sounds like a nice thing to do, but they soon found themselves suspended for a day instead of being thanked. The school had a high-tech security system that involved everyone who wasn't a student or employee being vetted by a security camera before they were let in, and there was no room for chivalry when it came to making sure the school was safe. Even saving someone's life can backfire on students. An asthma attack can turn serious in a hurry, but when a girl in an 8th grade Texas class told her teacher she couldn't breathe, the teacher wasn't concerned. She told the girl to wait until she heard back from the nurse. When the girl collapsed, a boy near her had seen enough. He picked the girl up, said some choice words, and ran the girl down to the nurse. His reward for helping a student who couldn't breathe? Being suspended for two days for cursing and for leaving the classroom without permission. His angry mother quickly changed her tune when she found out why he was in trouble. Sometimes the call of nature can mean a call home from the principal. We've all had a big lunch and we just need to get a little of that uh, air out, right? Well, that's what happened to a New Mexico teenager who let a big burp out in the middle of class. Nothing to get worked up over, right? Well, when he let out several more loud burps, the teacher sent him to the office. And that's where the story took a turn. In New Mexico, disturbing the education process isn't just grounds for suspension, it's a misdemeanor, and the 7th grader was suspended. The case went all the way to the Supreme Court and eventually they ruled that the law was legal. Might want to hold in that next burp. The danger of being suspended starts surprisingly early in some cases. A 5-year-old Pennsylvania girl loved her Hello Kitty-themed bubble gun so much that she couldn't bear to leave it behind when she went to school. She couldn't wait to have a bubble fight with her friends, but when she pointed it at another student, the school acted fast and suspended her for 10 days from kindergarten. The school claimed that she had made a credible threat against another student, but agreed to reduce the suspension to two days after the parents got an attorney involved. Students don't have to be just careful about what they do, but what they say. When high school senior Patrick Favre attended a school event hosted by 2014 Miss America Nina Davaluri, he decided to take a bold step and ask her to prom. The stunt had been public knowledge at the school for a few days, and he was warned not to disrupt the assembly. But he did it anyway, and Miss America seemed to think it was funny even as she turned him down. But the administration didn't. They suspended Favre for three days, but Davaluri was more sympathetic. She wrote a letter to the school asking them to be lenient. That wasn't the only time a fan of a celebrity got themselves in trouble. When popular religious NFL quarterback Tim Tebow became famous for his Tebowing stance and games, a group of students at Riverhead High School decided to show their support. They created a little flash mob in the hallway, all mimicking Tebow's kneeling stance. The only problem? This apparently caused a traffic jam in the hallway, and the administration wasn't amused. The four students who started it were suspended, and the school faced accusations of religious discrimination. But one young sports fan went even further in showing his support for his team. 
Patrick Gonzalez, a 12-year-old from San Antonio, was a huge fan of Spurs player Matt Bonner, and thanks to a talented barber, he was able to come to school with Bonner's image shaved into his head. The eye-catching hairstyle certainly made him popular, but it violated the school's dress code, which banned distracting hairstyles. The only way out of the suspension? Shave his head and get rid of the tribute. But Gonzalez did get something out of the deal, a package of basketball tickets and autographed gear directly from Bonner. Schools often have strict dress codes, and hair is a common source for trouble. In 2014, a little girl in third grade was battling cancer and lost all her hair. Her kind best friend didn't want her to go through this alone, so she decided to shave her head as well. This would have been a feel-good story if it wasn't for the administration's reaction. The public charter school thought a little girl with a shaved head would be a distraction, so they suspended her until her hair grew back. It was the ultimate bad PR move, and the school quickly found itself forced to make an exemption for this good friend. It wasn't the only time support for kids with cancer led to trouble. The charity Locks of Love encourages people to grow their hair out and then have it cut for the hair to be made into wigs for those battling cancer. One Ohio boy decided to undertake this project, but it seemed only girls at his high school were allowed to have long hair. The school told him that once his hair reached a certain length, he would have to cut it or be put into in-school suspension until he did. While he fought his case to the school board, they upheld the policy and the young man became the only prisoner of conscience in the ISS room. Big tech is making its way into schools, and that causes some unusual situations. RFID is a tracking system that's often used to keep tabs on livestock and make sure they're not escaping their confines. But one San Antonio principal had another idea, having his students wear necklaces with RFID chips when in the school. Good luck cutting class now, kids! One sophomore, Andrea Hernandez, thought this was a violation of her privacy. When she rejected a compromise that would allow her to wear a similar badge without the chip, because she didn't want to appear like she was complying, she was suspended and faced expulsion for refusing to comply with the dress code. Even pop music can get kids into trouble. Six-year-old Devante Meadows heard a song on the radio that seemed pretty catchy, so he decided to sing it in the lunch line. Unfortunately for him, the song was, I'm sexy and I know it, and the line, girl look at that body, was determined to not be appropriate for school. He was suspended for sexual harassment, and many people questioned whether it was likely if he even knew what he was singing about. He probably didn't, given that the song had been parodied on Sesame Street not long before the incident. But some incidents can carry much more serious consequences for the kids involved. Kira Wilmot, a star student at Bardo High School in Florida, decided to do an experiment that she had seen on YouTube for a science class. She mixed toilet bowl cleaner and aluminum foil, which can create an impressive chemical reaction. But she got more than she was counting on, a small explosion that sent smoke billowing into the room. While no one was hurt and nothing was damaged, the explosion startled people enough that Wilmot was expelled from school and charged with a felony, discharge of a weapon on school property. The idea of a promising young student possibly facing jail time for a science experiment caused a national outrage, and Wilmot eventually had the charges dropped and was allowed back into school to graduate with her class. But that was nothing compared to the furor of the final case, which got the President of the United States involved. 14-year-old Ahmed Mohammed was a science buff at MacArthur High School in Texas, and he liked to experiment with simple household devices. When he took apart a digital clock and put it together in a new shape, he decided to bring it to school to show his teachers. While most of them might have been impressed, his English teacher panicked. She thought the strange-looking device looked like a bomb and contacted the principal. Ahmed was arrested and questioned for hours without his parents being allowed to see him. While no charges were filed, he was suspended from school, and that's where the outrage started. His story became national news, with many saying it made no sense that a digital clock would be mistaken for a bomb. Others said he was racially profiled, being from a Sudanese Muslim family. The anger over the case spread so far that President Barack Obama tweeted his support, saying, cool clock, Ahmed, and inviting the boy to the White House. While Ahmed's suspension was over after three days, the controversy wasn't, and his family filed a lawsuit against the school district for violating his civil rights, although it was later dismissed. But it's not many school suspensions that people are still debating on talk radio five years later. For what happens when these situations escalate even further, check out Weird Times Police Arrested Kids. Or watch World's Worst Teachers, Nine Insane Things That Got Them Fired, for what happens when the other people at school get into trouble.